Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shukra, and you find me this morning outside the White House pub in Bladen in Oxfordshire. Bladen is the village in which Winston Churchill is buried. It's right on the edge of the Blenheim estate. And I'm here to meet Kevin McEnany, who owns this pub and is the chef here. We're going to talk to him about his pub, about his restaurant, and a little bit about Christmas. Come with me. Lovely to meet you. How are you and doing? It's also extremely good of you, frankly, to allow us into your lovely place during this busy time of Christmas. But it's, That's uh, all right. I hope everything's going well for you. It's not bad. It's going all right. Um, I'd like to quickly start, if I may, by finding out a little bit about you, um, where you come from. I know, I know you've been here a couple of years, but before that you were in this industry. I've been in this industry since the age of 16. Oh, right. I see. Have you? Indeed. So we were 20, 23 years in January. Right. So a long time. And this was working initially, presumably not for yourself, but for other people. Other well, people started yeah. off as a barman at 16, back yeah, home, right. back yeah. home in Carrick, and uh, progressed, came yeah. over to England in 97 after I did my exams, right. did a few years for Whitbread, came back home, worked for pubs and hotels. In Ireland? In you? Ireland, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. and then came back from Dublin to Dundalk, and yeah. back in Carrick, and then moved back to Oxford. Yes, I see. And I've had two pubs, this is my third pub in Oxford, but I managed two. Right. And then this one's my own pub. And this is, this is the one you took on. This is the baby. Um, it is, and this is very exciting. A couple of years ago, well, were you, at what stage did you become a chef? Because chef you most definitely are now. <laughs> <laughs> I sort of fell into that really, you know. Yeah. Uh, when I took over the first pub, I always felt it was very important that you should know every facet of the business. And yeah. so no one could put the one over your eyes to, to a degree and be able to jump in at yeah. any point if you need to, need to. Now things and food has evolved a hell of a lot, a lot over the last 14 years. So, just organically, grew yeah. into it where, you know, sometimes it's very hard to find chefs. Yeah. So you end up doing it yourself and I teach, I, you know, I learn a lot, I read a lot and, yeah. and I sort of teach myself to a degree or yeah. I've got a couple of well, friends. Well, um, you're not alone amongst self-taught chefs in, in this business. There are, there are, there are many and, that, and, uh, and it usually works extremely well. Um, you, what, how many, sort of how big is your kitchen here? Do you have, uh, are you absolutely on your own or do you have? I, on my own predominantly. Yeah. I have, you know, a couple of people who can come in and help. Yeah. Do you know, if I need a second in there or I've got a KP that works the weekends, so he yeah. normally do, do, do the desserts and bits and pieces like that. But otherwise, it's me. Yes, I see. From start to finish. And now you, you, when you got this place, your aim was to create a, a proper local pub. Yes. With, with good food, almost as a secondary thing. Do you still that find that to be the case, or is food your main thing? Food, food was always the main, the main component of it, really, because without food, where we are, you're not going to make the business work. Because you, you have to draw people in. You have to draw people in, very much destination. We're very close to everywhere, but we're not in anywhere, if yeah. that makes sense. And we're in a yeah. small village, lovely village, but small. Yeah. So you really have to have good food, home-cooked, fresh, yeah. to, to draw people in. And the drink is great. But yeah. in this day and age, it's a secondary, it's a yes. secondary part of the business. Uh, but at the same time, you need to maintain that public house, sort of the local pub. Absolutely, feed. and it's so yeah. important, you know, that your locals, you know, can come in with their children, with their partners, wives, husbands, can come in and have a drink in a nice setting, where there's something on the TV for them, or there's a bit of music, there's a newspaper to read, yeah. they feel at home. The people behind the bar are going to look after them and be friendly with them, and it's extremely important. As much as food is very important, it's very much to keep a pub a pub. Yeah, and it is what creates the atmosphere for those people who are dining here uh, totally. anyway. So it, it makes a big difference, doesn't it? Now you're um, you're in an area where the competition in pubs is extremely strong because there are lots of good people around, and there's a great feel about the importance of local produce and that kind of stuff in this part of the world. Do you find yourself sourcing as much as you can? Your yeah, you know? I mean. Local produce is great. It also has to balance on price. Yeah. So you always have to try balance balance the books in that way. But I do. I mean, my eggs come local. All my pork comes just on the far side of Whitney. Yeah. You know, from a local farmer who I know. Yeah. Fish I get local, fresh. My veg comes from a 
a, a veg company who normally looks after just Oxford Cotswolds and, yes. and that, that sort of area yeah. where his farms where he picks his fruit and veg. Yeah. So I get as much as I can. Yeah, there are some things that you'll always have to buy from a bigger supplier. Well, I was going to say, it's always amazed me this because it's a, it's a complex business running a restaurant. You need an enormous number of different suppliers. And if you're really restricting yourself entirely to local produce, it must become incredibly complicated. And I, and I imagine you need to make life a little easier for yourself. Well, you kind of juggle it a little bit. Yes, but you know, yeah. even, even someone like, like Green King who own this building, you know, they've got suppliers that you can use, which yeah. are really good and very competitive. Yeah. So you pick and choose what you need. Yeah. You know, you pick the fresh against it and, and, and bits and pieces that you need, just yeah. dry goods, and then you pick against the fresh that you'll use in the local butchers and, yeah. and everything else. So yeah, you marry them all up together to create what you need to use. Right. Well, you produced a, a wonderful package here because the, you, I think you've just recently, fairly recently, redecorated, haven't you? The last really? five weeks, yes. yeah, we did. I mean, that is very exciting because it does look wonderful here, I must say, right now. Um, so tell me a little bit about your source of business. Obviously, you've got your local village trade, but you are here right on the edge of the Blenheim estate, uh -huh. right just outside Woodstock. And presumably, you get some good tourism business here. As we well. get, yeah, we do. And I mean, to be fair, we get a lot right now down to the Christmas lights that the Blenheim are doing, and there, and there are festivities that they're doing right now. Yeah. From Easter onwards, when the tourist rates are picking up, the caravan site opens up the top of the road. Right. A lot of the tourists are coming in then who are visiting Church's Grave, visiting Blenheim, yeah. visiting the area. And so you get a hell of a lot more coming through. So yeah, we're very yeah. much peak from March right through to end of September. So the church in which Churchill's buried is almost literally opposite your pub. Right it's across the road. Completely across the road. Some say he drank here. Yeah, so <laughs> Some well, say. I, I, I expect he probably did. <laughs> um, yes, I see. So that, so that makes it a fairly seasonal thing. But, uh, but as you rightly say, Christmas is a big thing at Blenheim, and, and particularly at the moment, isn't it? So, Huge, it's just the first time they've done it. You know, and, and, and Christmas is big anyway. You know, we really yeah. go and, and go for our Christmas bookings, like every other pub, restaurant in the area, and anywhere. Yeah. You go and try and pick as much trade up as you possibly can. So yeah. you want to be yeah. not so seasonal that you don't that you have a, a steady, yeah. a steady income trade it's twelve months of the year, not going. just good for six and bad for six. Yes, which which is soul destroying. Uh, well, so Christmas is. Are you full on Christmas Day yet? We're not quite full yet. Yes, we've so got quite got a, a few bookings. We've got a few spaces. Very exciting to uh, see whether or not we can uh, persuade people that it'd be a great place to come. Uh, but there will be thousands who won't be able to will be doing it themselves. So I'm going to ask you today, Kevin, whether you have any good tips about how to make Christmas at least slightly stress-free. Well, other than going out and getting someone else to cook it for you, Which you're going to have to do it yourself. Of so bad. the key is not to bite off more than you can chew. Right. You know, so if it's a smaller group, don't go for the big board. It takes so, so long and so much longer to cook and to prepare and get it right. Yeah. That go for your turkey crowns. You know, much easier, more manageable. You can get them smaller, you can get them larger if you want them bone and rolled, right. de bone and rolled, or you can get them smaller from your butchers. Even your local supermarket. You Just know. to be clear, we're talking about a turkey crown being the, the bird without any of the wings well, or the legs. The wings, the legs, the bones, yes. all gone. So it'll yes. cook a hell of a lot quicker. Yeah, and right. if you want to be a bit more inventive, you could you cut it open and, and put your stuff in the middle with your sausage meat and make like a turkey roulard out of it. Right. If you don't want to do anything like that, you want to keep it simple, get it prepared the day before. You right. know, put on a very, very low heat. A bit like your vegetables, you know, if you're going to go for your traditional Brussels sprouts, your yeah. parsnips, your carrots, mashed potato. If you can have your potatoes done a day in advance, even two days before. Really? Vegetables, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You, can, you can make your mash two days before, it'll keep grand yeah. in the fridge. Yeah. Warm it back up in a pan with some cream and some butter, or even just some whole milk. Yeah. Have a lovely creamy feel to it. Same as your Brussels sprouts, because you want them cooked off before you're going to, hopefully, pan fry them with some butter. With, bit of pancetta or some smoked streaky bacon. This is, this is the interesting thing about Brussels sprouts. They, they are suddenly become interesting and, uh, and people realise it. Because I mean, the, the old fashioned idea of a Brussels sprout usually boiled. overcooked and boiled, you know, boiled, boiled to hell. death is, is very much no, not, no longer with us. So that's interesting. So with, with a bit of bacon and, and Yeah, stuff I'd rather use a smoked streaky bacon or pancetta. Yeah, and so right. if you can't get pancetta, smoked streaky bacon would be grand. Cube, yeah. it, cube it up. You can even go to Sainsbury's and all the other supermarkets get your lardons. Yeah. Put them in there with some butter, a nice bit of salt yeah, and pepper. Awesome. Maybe even put some chestnuts in there. So, so if, you, make cook, it if nice. you cook your Brussels sprouts in advance, how do you keep them? You just keep them they'll keep quite well in, in a bowl there. in the fridge. Yeah, they keep quite really? well. You could put a little bit of uh, towel on the bottom to soak up any of the any of the water that's going to seep through because it will. Once you 
once you've parboiled boiled them yeah. or you've blanched them and then you take them off, then they will leak a little bit of water. But you put them in the fridge sealed so yeah. they're not to, you know, you want to keep them sealed. You don't want to leave them open because you get that fridge, smell of the fridge in there. It's not going to taste very good. Right. So seal your, seal your vegetables up once you've cooked them. But, you know, the vegetables, well, you know, to me, I'd be getting them ready on the 23rd. Yes. Getting yes, them yes. ready on the 23rd that evening. So the 24th, change your water frequently. So, the, you know, so and that's very important. That is important, isn't it? So, so and you're, so um, twice a day, change the water. Yeah, sort of thing. very much so. Right, very okay. much so. You know, simple things like if you're going to use a bro if you're going to use broccoli that, for your Christmas day, then that's, do it on the day. Because it's the only thing you That's a three or four minute okay. job. Right. For your broccoli to be to be blanched yeah. off, blanched off in, yeah. a, in a pot of nice buttery water with plenty of seasoning. Right. But okay. If you get as, as, much, as much done a day to two days before, it makes Christmas Day very much easier. You know, your your potatoes can be par boiled yeah. for your roast. Have them done. Right. Leave them somewhere cold. The day I take them back out. If you want to use your goose, your jock fat in there. Or your vegetarians just want to use some oil. Yeah. You know, some oil on there. Plenty of nice bit of rock salt, some herbs. Yeah. Use some lemon thyme is really nice. A bit of rosemary. Then roast right. them off, and they'll be lovely. But you can get them done. You should cook. Add to me. I'd be cooking my roast yes. potatoes off two days in the evening before the twenty twenty fourth. This sounds like a, a brilliant way of doing it. Then you're feeding hundreds. So this is, this is uh, quite a, and quite a few. And in, in, but in the trade, you do. You can't cook everything on. You can't be doing no. potatoes on the go. No. So you're having a roast dinner on Sunday, I can't be cooking your roast potatoes there. You have to have them done in advance. Yes. So you, yeah. do, so you do them that, you know, the day before. On a Saturday, I'll be cooking my roast potatoes. For Sunday, I'll be roasting them. Yes. And then you put them back in the oven to warm up, and they're lovely. We've got to know. start thinking more like chefs and less like... There's enough cookery programs, isn't there? There's yes, enough there cookery programs. Everybody cookery has a really yeah. good idea of how the, how the one things to be done. Yeah. But it is doing it a little bit in advance, because otherwise, you've got people around, you yeah. know, there's some drink going on, everybody's happy, hot whiskeys are flying, yes. you're going to, you've maybe gone to mass, you've come back, stockings have been opened, yes. and you want to take it, uh, yes, take it a little bit easy. Take it a little bit easier. Well, I know, and I, I agree, in the, and also may perhaps have lunch quite late in the day and so on. I think these are very good tips, Kevin, and I'm, I'm grateful to you. I, I've no doubt that our viewers will take note and uh, they'll no have so. a better, better time. Now, um, next year, your sort of tourism season starts in, in sort of April. Presumably that's around that Easter time, about yeah. Easter time, and you take reservations for meals and that kind of stuff. Yes, yeah, yeah, we do. Right, um, because I think you know I know that a great many of the people who watch us um, come from abroad and will mm -hmm. be interested to know that you're here. And, they can uh, find us online. Yeah, online, Excellent. Instagram, Twitter, yeah. Facebook, website, everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. We we take bookings absolutely morning, evening. Right, no problem at all. Excellent stuff. Well, I think, well, I think it's been extremely nice to meet you. I no wish problem. you the best of luck with your Christmas. I think it's an absolutely wonderful place. Thank and, you very uh, much. I look forward to seeing you again. Cheers. Thank Take you. Care. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Well, I enjoyed that very much. Kevin is clearly an enthusiast, and I'm looking forward to having a Christmas meal here myself. I hope you have a wonderful time. Remember, you can find us on Facebook. You can visit our website, thecotswoldexplorer.co.uk. Subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Have a great Christmas and we'll see you in the new year.